Thank you very much, Sean, and uh, good morning all. Good morning, my dear friends. I have discovered that Senegal was an English-speaking country now, <laughs> so I decided that as a Benin citizen, I will speak French. Vraiment. <laughs> <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Um, notre sœur Aminata me dispense de oh, faire. Our friend la Aminata now has done the first part for me. She talked about African optimism, giving us the statistics uh, and the reasons, uh, et the futur, immediate and future ones, uh, moins, for to at least uh, que, uh, consider that there are no suspense concerning the, the African uh, potential. Donc, uh, so I would like to thank her for having uh, uh, done this presentation, and I'm completely, I do completely agree with her. I'd also like to thank the President of the French. The Moroccan Economic Council, Social and Environmental Council, whom I would like to thank on behalf of the participants for the hospitality of uh, the kingdom. Uh, I'm struck, uh, you talked about the dividends of the uh, future integration, and I think this is one of the most important engines uh, presented uh, probably by you in a dramatic way by saying that we only 12% of our exchanges are internal exchanges among African countries. Uh, it depends on the uh, which part of Africa. The, uh, East African is above 20 percent. West Africa is uh, progressing uh, quickly. They are above 15 percent now. Uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, the, the whole continent represents 3 percent of uh, the flows, the overall uh, global flows of imports and exports. So when you have 20 percent of exchanges within our country for a continent that is only involved in 3 percent of the world trade, so we are above average in terms of what we represent. So what struck me in the three presentations that were made uh, Tout de même, les panel, effets de volume the, extraordinaire, the volume uh, effects, the extraordinary volume effects that we have to keep in mind. You have insisted on talk to 1 billion, 200,000 inhabitants, so we're going to become uh, double by the, the double, double its population uh, within one generation. Uh, this is something that is unprecedented, not even Donc by China. So there are volume effects that are quite extraordinary. We can add to this. Uh, one country per year, so in terms of we, we have uh, 55 uh, now, and we add 25 million our children every year, and we add also uh, something like Senegal plus Mauritania plus Gambia, uh, the, the Gambia, the, 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 the equivalent of these countries each year, while uh, the Europe is reduced by two or three Slovenia uh, equivalents per year. So we see our demographic dimension is quite important, and the volumes are quite impressive. Now, out of the 2,500 uh, billions that you have mentioned, in terms of uh, power of uh, purchase, uh, need to be multiplied by three. Uh, we are uh, faced in a situation of uh, a dynamic uh, in fact, I would like the uh, IFD. We are here in the presence of a dynamics that is uh, in terms of parity of uh, power, power of purchase, and so uh, this is something that uh, we should not overlook. What I would like to insist on, however, is uh, the fact that this African development is uh, much more endogenous than what we uh, tend to think. That is, the, the flow of direct investment are fundamental from the quality point of view, and even quantity-wise, they represent 5% of the uh, GDP of the continent per year. The continent is after Asia and far uh, before Europe and even Japan, or even more uh, evidently Japan. It's a, a continent with a lot of savings and investments. We, we save and we spend in Africa much more than we do in other continents, except Asia. The average of the investment rate uh, for household, households, uh, public, private investments in Africa is 25% of the GDP. So this 5% of the GDP of, uh, in direct for investment uh, has to be seen within the five, uh, the, the framework of the 25% of the. So the, the share of Africa is important. Uh, the investment is also internal and. Uh, 
economic growth, like all the world economies, is driven by general consumption of the households, enterprises and administrations, but massively by the household consumption. So we are here uh, in presence of a growth that is largely endogenous, internal. After the 2008 or 2009 uh, crisis, when uh, the second semester of 2011 and in the first semester of 2013, when Europe was in a recession period, Africa had progressed because it was the least impacted, uh, the continent least impacted by the 2008 or 9 crisis in terms of uh, added value, in terms of uh, GDP, regularly 2010, 2011, 2013, 2014, 2015, until the uh, oil crisis. So I would like to think, insist on the fact that this, this growth is endogenous and that it's it it's not really uh, connected with the uh, crisis in Europe, uh, who is also our partner, first supplier, first buyer, first uh, exporter, first uh, uh, source of support, and the first uh, place where our mi migrants go, and of course they send uh, the remittances, which is a source of, uh, 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 we need to uh, say make savings, and our savings come from, uh, from the three fourths of the savings come from the Africa. African uh, remittances. So we need these remittances to be sent. Uh, so the savings of our uh, natives who, uh, native Africans who are in, uh, living in Europe. So we need this uh, uh, contribution of our migrants. So remittances are very important for us as a source of uh, savings. Um, in Morocco, it's part. It, it, it has a great deal, uh, plays a great role in the um, internal GDP. And we should not forget about this. We should not overlook the role, the important role of our diaspora, which is what we used to observe in Eastern Europe and in China, uh, which was both domestic and external, coming from the uh, for the, the migrant population. So this is something that I wanted to highlight. So we're talking about this, uh, the importance of uh, endogenous factors. But since we have all uh, been in executive positions, uh, I myself, for a very short period, we still have in common a certain number of problems. We have a problem of the labor market, because 25 million of children who are born, uh, we don't know how to uh, integrate them 30 years later on the labor market. This is a failure on our part. In Senegal, we says it's it's uh, Yaminata's fault. In Benin, they say it's uh, the, the fault of uh, Lionel Zinsou. I don't know what they say in Morocco. But in fact, it is the fault of all the governments. When you have this uh, demographic growth, and we have this growth that is very important in terms of capital and very little important in terms of uh, labor. Some sectors, and this is why, Mr. General Director, we need the multilateral system of public assistance, which is threatened by the American abstention now. This, for us, is a very serious problem. It's going to feel it at the level of the World Bank, at the level of the African Development Bank. The fact that the uh, now uh, Africans, uh, the U.S. are withdrawing from multilateralism, this is a source of worry for us. But something which is very important, we have needs that are more important in terms of capital, much greater than those that the needs in any other continent. Agriculture is uh, cons consumes a lot of capital, followed by energy, followed by water, and followed by infrastructure in general. So by definition, any dollar that you invest in Africa creates more jobs than with the same dollar invested in Europe. This is why Senegal has 7% of uh, economic growth, seven, uh, something for Benin over the past years, and we do not create net jobs of four that would be the equivalent of 7% growth. That's something that Europe does with 1.5 uh, economic growth, because France has a model that is rich in terms of employment, and we have a model uh, which is uh, capital-driven but not job-driven. So this is something that a problem for us. So I'm going to conclude here by saying that we have a model that is unique where growth does not solve our job problems. Uh, imagine what uh, Europe would be if they had the same problem, if they had 7% of uh, growth, uh, for example, or even a Europe that would have uh, the 5% growth uh, rate of Benin. I'm not even talking about uh, uh, Côte d'Ivoire and Ethiopia. But we do have a growth that does not create jobs, and therefore we need to target entrepreneurship. We need to target the transformation 
taking off the informal sector is something that is more productive. We need to invent this model because growth without job creation is our common problem. We also have a problem of urban, uh, urban planning because uh, when the Europeans or even China develop their, their urban planning, which is of uh, a growth uh, factor, they because they empty their countryside and they fill uh, their cities. So we're going to create a European side of Africa within one generation. That means we're going to have to add 500 million uh, urban dwellers now. It's as if... So this uh, urbanization phenomenon is great. As Tom Bakunda said, we're going to have uh, rural areas that are uh, more and where you have more and more population because our demographic growth gives us a great urbanization, a rural exodus that can uh, pose some particular and social uh, stability problems, and we have rural areas which uh, have a greater population than in the past. In fact, they are not becoming empty; they are becoming more populated. So we need to have this uh, equilibrium between cities and urban areas, and the pressure is greater in sectors where there is no population, no electricity. No, uh, no access to certain basic infrastructures, fundamental ones, and this is why I think that what this uh, city deal is uh, more optimistic than I am, because he takes charge of peace and security. So our non-inclusive uh, model, which requires now a lot of imagination in order to solve this uh, equation between uh, uh, city and urban areas, uh, redu poverty reduction, which cannot, we cannot manage to have, our model is dangerous from the political and angle and from the, si the uh, social angle. It's not dangerous dormant. from the economic Placé. angle. If you want to make a lot of money and uh, invest in Africa, in the real estate business, in uh, whatever consumer goods uh, building sector, and we do not have any suspense from the economic point of view. But we do have a problem, a suspense, political suspense, social suspense, because our spontaneous model, our, our model spontaneously does not solve our social problems, because we have to create a model that is extremely adapted to our specific constraints. Thank you for your attention. I think the narrative has changed. I think that the panelists have succeeded in making clear that from the perspective of partnership, seen from Europe, seen from Asia, seen from the United States, there is far more opportunity than risk. Just one parenthetical observation before I open it up all to you. Think a little bit about how much value was destroyed in the global financial crisis between 2008 and 2011, and ask how much money has ever been lost in Africa under any conceivable circumstance. So our appreciation of risk in these frameworks is often badly skewed, as several of the panelists have already uh, made clear. 